This is my favorite joke that I do everywhere I go. It's nice that you have a properly tall pastor now. I have found that I'm apparently taller than most pastors in our presbytery, and the microphone is never right. Good morning. Uh, I am not your regularly scheduled pastor. Uh, I am John Creekpalm. It is lovely to be here on time this time. Some of you may remember I have been here before and uh, missed half the service because you guys start at 10, not 10.30. Uh, if there are any announcements, check your bulletin. Uh, it is lovely to be with you this morning. I am excited to worship God. Let us all join our hearts and our minds together with our uh, centering notes. Brothers and sisters, let us pray together. Awesome and gracious God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for gathering us together from all the many places that we have been. We thank you, Lord, that we are able to worship you. We ask now that our worship would be blessed. Our worship would be about you and that in all things we would be guided by your spirit. Open our hearts our ears and our minds to what it is that you would have us know, hear, and change. Let the distance between lips and ears be holy ground for your spirit to run amok and take any human words and change them to be the words of your spirit so we may draw closer to you. This we ask as we gather together as children worshiping our loving God. Amen. Please stand with our opening hymn found in the Green Celebration Hymnal, number 45, Crown Him with Many Crowns. We will sing all four verses.
that you would greet your neighbor and share with them the peace that has carried you to us this day. Say hello. As we enjoy the peace that our neighbors have provided for us, as we celebrate the fact that we have gathered together, we are reminded that we are people. We aren't perfect. We are broken. But we are still gathered. We are a family who cares about one another. And remembering that we and our brothers and our sisters are imperfect people helps to remind us to love one another, and more than that, reminds us to love ourselves in our imperfections. And so as we come together to pray our prayer of humility, I would like to remind you that with these words, to love yourself as you love your neighbor. Let us pray together. Gracious Lord, we look to you for our help. We have tried on our own. We have sought our own strength. And so often we find it is not enough. Our strength fails and we fall down. Our burdens are too heavy and we fall down. The path ahead frightens us and we fall down. It is from our knees that we cry out to you, Lord. You who gives us the courage to keep moving forward. You who wears our burdens and carries our cares. You who lifts us up from the ground, no matter how hard our fall has been. Your grace gives us the hope that we do not stand alone, but are raised with Jesus, who loves us more than the ground we sometimes hit. Brothers and sisters, scripture reminds us that the story of God is one of unrelenting love, so powerful and pure that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus, not even our own mistakes, burdens, and sorrows can keep God from loving who we are. Let us live deeply into who God knows us to be. Remembering who we are, let us join together in reading. Through the waters of baptism, we have died with Christ and are raised with him. With gratitude and with faith, we will walk the way of Christ. And this is the good news of the gospel, that in Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. We are forgiven.
first reading is from the Hebrew Bible, Ezekiel chapter 34, verses 11 through 16. For thus says the Lord God, I myself will search for my sheep and will sort them out. As shepherds sort out their flocks when they are among scattered sheep, so I will sort out my sheep. I will rescue them from all the places to which they have been scattered on a day of clouds and thick darkness. I will bring them out from the peoples and gather them from the countries and bring them into their own land. And I will feed them on the mountains of Israel by the water courses and in all the inhabited parts of the land. I will feed them with good pasture, and the mountain heights of Israel shall be their pasture. There they shall lie down in good grazing land, and they shall feed on rich pasture on the mountains of Israel. I myself will be the shepherd of my sheep, and I will make them lie down, says the Lord God. I will seek the lost, and I will bring back the strays, and I will bind up the injured, and I will strengthen the weak. But the fat and the strong I will destroy. I will feed them with justice. The second reading is from Paul's letter to the Ephesians, chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. I have heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love toward all the saints. And for this reason, I do not cease to give thanks for you as I remember you in my prayers that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give you a spirit of wisdom and revelation as you come to know him, so that, with the eyes of your heart enlightened, you may perceive what is the hope to which he has called you, what are the riches of his glorious inheritance among the saints, and what is the immeasurable greatness of his power for us who believe. according to the working of his great power. God put this power to work in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at his right hand in the heavenly places, far above all rule and authority and power and dominion and above every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in the age to come. And he has put all things under his feet and has made him the head over all things for the church which is his body, the fullness of him who fills all in all. Give thanks with a grateful heart. Give thanks to the Holy One. Give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son. a grateful heart give thanks to the Holy One give thanks because he's given Jesus Christ his Son and now let the weak say I am strong let the poor say I am rich because of Awesome God, as we continue to hear the words of Scripture, let us hear them with new ears. Let us see them with new eyes. Let your Spirit illuminate them for us so that we may draw closer to you than we have been before. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, who is the Word of God. Amen. From the Gospel of Matthew, chapter 25, verses 31 through 46. 
When the Son of Man comes in his glory and all the angels with him, then he will sit on the throne of his glory. All the nations will be gathered before him and he will separate people one from another as a shepherd separates the sheep from the goats. And he will put the sheep at his right hand and the goats at the left. Then the king will say to those at his right hand, Come, you who are blessed by my father, inherit the kingdom prepared for you from the foundation of the world. For I was hungry, and you gave me food. I was thirsty, and you gave me something to drink. I was a stranger, and you welcomed me. I was naked, and you gave me clothing. I was sick, and you took care of me. I was in prison, and you visited me. Then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry and gave you food, or thirsty and gave you something to drink? And when was it that we saw you a stranger and welcomed you, or naked and gave you clothing? And when was it that we saw you sick or in prison and visited you? And the king will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did it to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it to me. Then he will say to those at his left hand, You who are accursed, depart from me into the eternal fire prepared for the devil and his angels. For I was hungry and you gave me no food. I was thirsty, and you gave me nothing to drink. I was a stranger, and you did not welcome me. Naked, and you did not give me clothing. Sick, and in prison, and you did not visit me. Then they also will answer, Lord, when was it that we saw you hungry, or thirsty, or a stranger, or naked, or sick, or in prison, and did not take care of you? Then he will answer them, Truly I tell you, just as you did not do it to one of the least of these, you did not do it to me. And these will go away into eternal punishment, but the righteous into eternal life. So I love Christ the King Sunday. And I love it because despite my obvious youthful appearance, I am an old school Presbyterian. John Calvin is my grandpappy. And I think he was absolutely right when he said the sovereignty of God is the pillar upon which all things hang. I love it. And at the same time, Christ the King Sunday is one of those days where I am in most conflict with myself because I have spent all my <coughs> years of life growing up in America. And if there's one thing we Americans have a problem with, it's kings. Not those who play hockey in L.A., but monarchs. A hockey joke, didn't go over, all right. <laughs> Noted. <laughs> we do, we have a history of thumbing our noses at kings, of saying, you don't get to tell me what to do, of saying, if I don't have a voice and vote, you have no authority. This has been the entire history of who we are, and so we gather together and say, but Christ is king, and we go, I don't know if king is a great word. How about, how about Christ is my buddy? Go with that. That's less authoritarian. I love Christ the King Sunday because this conflict, it reminds me of who I'm supposed to be. Because if we're honest, the problem we have with kings is we don't like being told what to do. We don't like someone else saying, hey, you're going to go do this because I tell you to. I mean, it didn't work when I was seven. Why would that work now? Right? Who likes being told what to do? Show of hands. Exactly. And so when we say Christ is king, and we're supposed to listen to the king and do what the king says, that might cause a little bit of tension within you. And that tension is a good thing. That tension can be called growing pains. Because if you never question or doubt or wonder, but why, you're going to struggle to grow. And so when we say Christ is king, what does it mean for us as Americans who hate kings? 
it means we have to put some of ourselves aside. It means we have to recognize that we do not know enough to take that job on. I love the movie Rudy for one specific reason. There's a priest in it, and he says, after 35 years of being in the church, I have come to two immutable facts. One, there is a God. And two, it is not me. This Sunday is when we remember that Christ is the king and we are not. And so what does it mean? What does Christ do as king? Well, we heard about it. It is Christ who separates the sheep and the goats. It is Christ who comes to the mountaintop. It is Christ who fulfills those purposes. It is God and God alone who does these things. So what do we do? If God has already taken on the mantle of being king, of saying, of the flock here, I choose who is separated. I see. And you are all together. So what do you do? You care for people. Yeah, I, I understand we care for people. But how do we know who are the goats so we don't care for them? You don't. But if I don't know who's a goat, how do I care for the sheep? You don't. Because God is king and you are not. That doesn't seem very fair. I don't want to care for everyone. Too bad. There is a God and it is not you. And if you're starting to think, I don't really like how this sounds, yeah, that's kind of the point. Because that should be disquieting. That should pull at your heart a little bit. What happens if I help people I don't want to? What happens if I help someone and it turns out that they're a goat? What happens if I have to do something for someone I don't like? Why do I have to care for people who disagree with me? And I love the fact that Christ the King Sunday happens after Thanksgiving when we may have had to feed people we don't really like. There's a couple titters. <laughs> Haha, <laughs> so not every family is completely united in all things. And that's the point. We think of ourselves that we are a family of sheep, that we are all the sheep, and that our brothers and sisters are also the sheep. And what we are reminded here in these passages is no, you are gathered together, sheep and goats together, and you are called to feed one another. And you are called to visit one another. You are called to clothe one another. This passage from Matthew, I always think about because these are not always the things that we would think to do first. If you saw a naked man running down the street, would you think, I need to give him my coat? Or would you think, oh no, where's a cop? If you know someone in prison, do you think, I need to help them, I need to provide comfort for them? Or do you think, ah, I hope no one knows that I know them? If someone is sick, do you think, how can I care for them? Or do you think, thank goodness it's not me, I've got a big presentation tomorrow. The whole point is, that we are to care for one another. That is the only job we have in this kingdom. Everything else, taken care of by God. What you have to do, care for one another. What do you mean care for one another? I mean if someone is hungry, feed them. What if I don't want to? Did I stutter? If someone is in trouble, take care of them. What if they deserve it? I don't care. You are not king. I am king. Not me, God. I know it's real hard because I'm saying a lot of I statements. But this is 
this is where we get hung up. Because as we're saying this, we are thinking, but I don't have to be king, maybe I can be governor of the kingdom of God. Right? Maybe I can uh, not do these things, but set up ways for other people to do those things. I don't have to have all authority, but I can have some, right? And Jesus Christ makes it very clear, no, you don't. Because Christ is king and you are not. Because Christ is the one who says that these people are mine. Christ is the one who says, when you do this for them, you do it for me. And you are called to serve. Even if you don't want to. Even if you would rather have a management position, Christ is king. And there is only one. No matter how you think, no matter who your boss is, no matter the people in your family, Christ is king, and that is all that matters. And why that this is different than other kings is because the power of God and Christ's kingship is made truest in the resurrection. Think about that for a moment of all the earthly kings that we have ever had and thumbed our nose at and made fun of for all the improprieties and mistakes that they have made. Have we ever had a king who the exemplification of their power is giving life where there is none? The power of God is made manifest most completely in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. The kingship of God is about giving life. And if we look back at what Jesus is telling us to do in Matthew, it is the providing of life. When you are sick and someone brings you chicken soup, that restores your life. If you are in prison, if you are in trouble, If you are isolated, someone coming to you is bringing you life. If you are running down the street naked and freezing, someone giving you clothes is giving you life. As we celebrate Christ being king, we are also making manifest his power by giving life. By recognizing it is not by our authority but by the sovereignty of God that we do these things. And by recognizing that we do not get to say who gets and who doesn't. We do not decide the have and have nots. We do not get to choose the sheep and the goats. Because like I said, I'm an old school Presbyterian. John Calvin said, yes, there are the elect who will go to heaven. There are the reprobates who will go to hell. And you do not get to know who is who. So you must treat all as the elect. Christ is king, and he says when you look at your brother and sister, you do not get to choose how you see them. You must see them as a sheep who needs life. Be a giver of Christ's life. There is a freedom in recognizing that we are not God. We are not in charge of someone's salvation. We are called to give life. We are not in charge of who goes where. We are not in charge of figuring out who's in and who's out. We are called simply to give life. Christ is king, and we are all the sheep. Let us pray. Awesome and gracious God, we thank you that we do not have the burden of kingship. We know heavy is the head that wears the crown, and Lord, we are so thankful that as we live in a time 
when rulers, authority figures are looking to propagate their own power, are looking to do more for themselves than for their brothers and sisters. We are grateful for the example you give us and the reminder that we are not in charge. The reminder that it is not by our authority that we do things, but it is because of the life that you give. That as sheep in your kingdom, we celebrate. We give honor to your kingship, to your power through the giving of life. And Lord, when we feel tempted to create division, when we feel tempted to look upon our brother and sister and say, but you're a goat and I'm a sheep, remind us that that is not what you have called us to do. Remind us that we are to have eyes with the spirit of wisdom. That our eyes of our hearts are to be enlightened. That as we come to know Christ and his kingship, we would not only be filled with the life and the power of the resurrection, but we would know that when we look upon others, we see fellow sheep. Lord, take the worry of who's in and who's out from off of our minds as you remind us who is the king and who is called to care. Remind us that you are God and we are not. And help us to share the life and the love of your kingship with any and all who need it. And when we look upon our brothers and sisters in this room and outside these walls, let us see them as our fellow sheep, as our brothers and sisters, as those who need the gifts of life just as we do. And when we struggle with what to do with that, help us to feed. Help us to clothe. Help us to care and comfort. And as we do, let us know that you are king and we are your beloved sheep. Amen. Let us all please stand up with a beautiful spiritual message and prayer. And join in singing with our choir angels up here. Savior, like a shepherd lead us. It's number 688 in the celebration hymnal. It's also a handout, and I think the words will be up on our screen for us. So please join in singing.
table of bread and wine is now to be made ready. It is the table of company of Jesus and all who love him. It is the table of sharing with the poor of the world with whom Jesus identified himself. It is the table of communion with the earth in which Christ became incarnate. So come to this table, you who have much faith and you who would like to have more, you who have been here often and you who have not been for a long time, you who have tried to follow Jesus and you who have failed. Come, it is Christ who invites us to meet him here. As we celebrate the sacrament of the Lord's Supper, let us pray our prayer of thanksgiving. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to our Lord and God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. It is truly right and our greatest joy to give you thanks and praise. You may be seated. As we gather together this day, we are reminded of another table, a table that Jesus and the disciples sat around, a table where Christ gave not only of his words, but of the bounty of the table, that that last supper with his friends gathered around him, Jesus Christ took the bread and he blessed it an ordinary thing made sacred, and he broke it. And he gave it to his brothers sitting around the table, withholding none from any. And in a like manner, he took the cup, and he blessed it, saying, this is my blood poured out for the forgiveness of sins. As we gather around, as we share in the bread to represent his broken body, as we share in the cup to represent the sealing of the covenant, we are reminded that this is not a table for the worthy, it is a table for the hungry, for those who need, for those who care, and so, brothers and sisters, as the sheep you are, look to the sheep in your flock around you. And when you feel mo so moved, take your bread and take your juice and eat and celebrate not only the bounty of your table, but the bounty around you. And know that you are fed and filled by Jesus Christ, whose body and blood we celebrate till he comes again. Let us feast each of us. Your only son, no sin to hide. But you have sent him from your side to walk upon this guilty song and to become the Lamb of God. Oh, Lamb of God, sweet Lamb of God, I love the whole. precious blood my Jesus Christ the Lamb of God your gift of love 
we crucify. We laughed and scorned him as he died. The humble king we call the fraud and sacrifice the lamb of God. blood dear Jesus Christ our Lamb of God Let's pray together. Gracious Lord, we thank you for this gift. The gift of being fed. The gift of your covenant. Gifts given to your children. Gifts given to those who are obedient and those who are wayward. Gifts given so that we would be blessed. And God, we celebrate Because we are blessed not only for our own sakes, though we are in such need of blessing, but we are blessed to be a blessing unto others. That we are given much so that we may do and give, not only of what we have, but of who we are. And that, Lord, for that we are truly grateful for the opportunity to be who we are. That we are not simply parts of your creation, but that we are more. That we are not simply servants shouting our prayers into the void, hoping the king sitting distant will hear. We are not peasants working in the fields knowing that we will gather and collect nothing, for the Lord demands all. We celebrate because we are called your children. That when we hurt, we may come to you with that hurt, no matter how great or how small. When we rejoice, when our hearts leap with passion, you are there with us no matter how great or small the joy to celebrate with us, you are not only king, but you remind us that you are the father who leans close to hear the whispers of our lips and the words of our hearts. No matter where we are, no matter what we do, God, we thank you for that. That in all places, with all people, you are not merely the authority, but you are the comforter. And it is because of that we are able to pray. It is because of who you are and who you tell us we are that we are able to lift our words to you. To know that you hear us, truly hear us that we lift our words to you. And so, God, as we gather together, we pray for people and places that we may never see, but we know are in need of your comfort. For places of violence and strife, for places of war, where children are not lifted up as we know that they should be. We ask for your comfort. God, we ask for your comfort in the hospital room for the patient waiting to hear a diagnosis. We ask for your comfort in the home 
of someone waiting for when their time is up. We ask for your comfort, and we ask, knowing God, that not only do you provide comfort, not only is your power manifest in the giving of life, but that we are called to share in that. And so, God, we ask that you give us courage to be agents of peace and life, in the places where violence is easily found. We ask that you would give us the courage and the patience to be the sheep of comfort to those who are sick and hurt. We ask this because, Lord, we know that you are also there, that we do none of this on our own. It is not by our brilliance, It is not solely by the strength of our hearts that we are able to do these things, but we do them because the king sits beside us and gives power to the life that we bring. We do this because the greatest of fathers sits beside us with a hand on our shoulder saying, give peace and comfort. And so, God, it is remembering who we are that we have gathered here this day. It is remembering who you are, that we are able to be who we are called to be. It is in knowing what we are. Beloved children, sheep of your flock, that we have gathered here to know what we can do and what we can lean on you to provide. And so, God, it is not as servants or peasants, but it is as children that we lift our voices up to you, knowing that our words will be heard by you, that we lift our voices together, one family, using the words given to us by Jesus Christ, we pray. Our Father, Father, who who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us all from evil. Thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. When we speak of carrying his light into the world, it is a reminder that that light is the giving of life. It is the sun that causes the flowers to grow. It is the light of warmth and peace that we have. That is what we carry to our fellow sheep throughout the world. Let us celebrate as we stand and sing our closing song. We will sing verses 1, 2, and 4.
fellow sheep receive the benediction. In our brightest of days and in our blackest of nights, we are never outside of God's sight. Let we who worship Jesus Christ go forth, sharing the life of his divine light. Let us go knowing that we have been created beautifully by God the Father. Let us go knowing that we celebrate the kingship of Jesus Christ the Son. And let us go knowing that wherever we are, we carry with us the comfort and the life by the power of the Holy Spirit. Go this day and be the sheep that you were created to be. Amen. of the world.